Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 186. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, Zinfidel ZT has dug up Wingames backslash GG backslash Luckstar. Why do I have a funny feeling this is going to be some kind of horoscope thing? Like Lucky Stars or something like that? Anyways, Luckstar. Um, got some WAV files. Uh, file ID.diz, Lucky Stars video slots. Oh, we're going to have slot machine type thing. This isn't your grandmother's slot machine. I should hope not, we're on a computer. <laughs> this is a nine wheel video slot machine with eight pay lines, also has bonus spins, wildcard symbol, progressive bonus pool. Hmm, well, let's see what we got. Um, we have a help file. That caused everything to refresh for some reason. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, Lucky Stars video slots. Uh, we got registration. You purchased registered version, then thank you, let us thank you for your support. Notice the registered version has many enhancements and additional features not available in the shareware version. Um, does it actually say what they are? Um, not sure. Although apparently the registration fee for this slot machine software is $20. And I can't highlight it because it's, because <laughs> it's a Windows help file. A lot of interesting things listed here. Like, this seems like a lot for just a slot machine program. But... Oh, and apparently it was programmed by uh, Mike Comish? Or Cornish? Kind of hard to tell from here, because it's R and N together can look like an M. But in any case, uh, let's actually try playing it. So, stars. So, we got a registration info here. Oh, it says what the ex extra features are here. Um, 1,000 credits at the start of a new game. That's not much of a feature. Unlimited borrowed credits. Again, not much of a feature. Ability to save games and an autoplay feature. Double or nothing. High-low card game. Statistics screen and additional sounds. Interesting. Oh, register later. And here we go. I got a very vertical window. You don't see that very often. Single border, non-maximizable. Makes sense. Well, and apparently the guy was going under the business name Ultimate Software. Which, let's be honest, this doesn't look very ultimate. Although if it works properly, then like, I mean... I'm gonna guess if we try to... Yeah, if we try to go for any of the registered features, it'll tell us we can't use it in the registered version. Uh, well. So, bet. Oh, we do have sound effects. Wait. Oh, I see how this works now. Okay, so when I saw this little grid of, th of 3x3 here, I was thinking it was going to be like on a typical slot machine where you have three reels, and then each reel has three positions that it can stop on for the three different rows. But this is actually nine reels. So that's why you can actually have vertical potentials, because normally on a on a slot machine with only th with three reels and three positions, you wouldn't ever have any of the symbols lined up vertically because that would make no sense. <laughs> but no, if it's got if it's got nine different reels, then that actually works. Well, let's see if we can get win anything. Spin it. I don't think I won anything. Okay, at least there's a simple button here to just fill it all up and spin the wheels. And I still didn't win anything. Okay, that's kind of neat. If you actually do win something, it shows you what, what the lines were and how much you win as a result of that. And again, double features not on the thing, so it just gives me the money. Okie dokie then. Okay, that's neat. The cherries don't actually have to be um, in a row. They just have to be on the same line from the looks of it. 
Maybe. Unless it's a star that's giving me the 10 bonus there. Um, let's actually see what the payout structure even is. Payout chart. Oh, I see what's going on. So the stars are actually wild cards. So that's why if you, ha if you had the two cherries in the star, it was 10 because it was actually counting as three cherries. Okay, that makes sense. So yeah, this is playing like a typical slot machine program. Um, oh, we just got three, three grapes in a row for 12. And then also a single cherry for one. So I'm not quite sure what the exact odds on this game would be. Because I don't think it said it in the... Um, I don't think I said it in the thing here. Yeah, I'm not seeing any, um, I'm not seeing any ratings for odds in here, but given the fact that there's supposed to be a statistics thing that we can't access, I'm going to guess that you would use the statistics screen to sort of gauge how your odds are turning out based on all the plays that you've made. But yeah, it's other, it, like, this is, has a good presentation to it. Oh, that was a lot of wild cards right there. Um, yeah, this has a good presentation to it, although I'm not sure if I would call it worth $20. Because, <laughs> like, I mean, it's ultimately just a slot machine game. All you're doing is pushing, putting in some cash and hitting the spin. Like, that's it. But, yeah, for what it is, it's not bad. It's just, I don't think this is worth $20. Something like this, like, 5 or 10 maybe, but... Definitely not 20. Next up, Robert Mackey has dug up Wind Games backslash GG backslash TNT. I mean, I'm only guessing this is T and T. Like, T and T, only T and T. If that makes any sense? Why don't you just call it TNT instead of being weird? Um, T and T. Okay, so it probably stands for tiles. We have four help files? What? Uh, that's kind of weird. Um, I guess we'll just run it. So, tiles and tribulations, aka T and T. Okay, I get it. Uh, and what do we got here? Order, order full version, complete with 50 challenging levels, digitized sound, a stereo soundtrack. Please send a check or money order for $24.95. Ooh, boy. Prices are going up. And this apparently goes to a Technological Computer Innovations Corporation located in Colorado. That's uh, quite the name. I have to wonder who made this. But I think... Oh! Okay, um, we're off to a good start with some decent animation. Uh, apparently made by uh, Mark Lansdowne. Oh, and also uh, Yako Mochizuki. And a Don Mettler. Or, Me I, ca I can't, Metzler. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of people involved with this. Okay, so we actually... We actually have professionally made software here, so this might have been sold in stores or something given that, but anyways, um, I guess options. So we got normal speed, control, I guess switch it to mouse, maybe. The fact that the keyboard is the default, oh, we can't select sound effects, unfortunately, because it's not registered. Um, yeah, let's get the help up, see what's going on here. Okay, so Tiles and Tribulations is an arca action arcade game for the Microsoft Windows 3.1 operating system. Games composed of 50 challenging levels. And, okay. Goal in Tiles and Tribulations is to catch falling tiles with a keyboard controlled paddle, then drop the tiles into the tile bin at the bottom of the. This is Clax. <laughs> this is just Clax. Okay, so Clax is a puzzle game that was ported to literally everything. In fact, the, I think the Genesis got like two ports of Clax on it. Um, it was basically made to compete with Tetris, but this is apparently an, in, um, well, I'd say independently made, but apparently made by a technological computer innovations company, so, eh. Um, but yeah, I don't need. I don't need to know how to play Clax. 
And yep, this is playing exactly as I would expect. Oh, is that two different colors? There might be two different colors there. Like a light... Yeah. So apparently we're just going for... In typical clacks, you would normally go for specific kinds of lines at the start, but it seems for here, we're just going for points. Okay, white is not a good color to have going here. <laughs> Actually, this moves kind of fast. Like, not super fast, but fast enough that it's kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> And there's level one. We get some flashy colors, and then... Oh, so it is going to have goals. So, goal for next level, ten three-tile verticals. Ten? Freaking ten of them? Even Clax wasn't that mean on the second level. Okay, so apart from the fact that it's giving way too many different colors at the start of the game, it seems to be kind of evil. <laughs> This is like an evil version of Clax. Like, I know Clax wasn't supposed to be a cakewalk to begin with, but this is just... No, this is just being hard for right from the start, for whatever reason. I'm actually not entirely certain if a DOS version of Clax exists. I can't believe one wouldn't. But I have not had any experience with a DOS version of Clax. So if one exists, then I'll probably have to cover it on Ancient DOS games someday. Yeah, that kind of, um, that's kind of tricky, the fact that th because the animation is only on the blocks there, like, it's kind of difficult to tell, um, when certain things happen. Like, it is, it is keeping track of lives over here, like, misses and everything. I have noticed it's actually changing the background with each level, so that's kind of neat. Also, this level actually started with stuff on the board. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um... <laughs> I screwed this one up. No, it's not what I meant to do. Okay, I think I can recover this. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, this is playing perfectly fine. It's just, it's Clax. It's not... <laughs> it, it seems weird to be playing a third-party version of Clax when Clax was still... was being ported to everything. Like, how did... How did Tenjin not get mad at these people? <laughs> For making this. I guess may maybe that kind of explains the fact that I never heard of this particular this particular version of the game until now. So yeah, they clearly did a good job of marketing this one. <laughs> As in not. So yeah, that's Tiles and Tribulations, Clax Clone. A little expensive, but at least it plays perfectly fine. And our last dig for today comes from Dick DeYoung. Win games backslash unclassified backslash chaos. I've got a funny feeling this is just going to be a screensaver. Because I'm pretty sure there is a screensaver called chaos. Um, well, maybe not, because we got a help file. Now, several DLLs and two executables. I guess one of these might be a self-extractor. Although they're virtually the same size, so maybe not. Um, what's the help file say? The... <laughs> well, that's not helping much. Um, well, I can't really tell what this is supposed to be. Um, like, we got things about pixel sizes and stuff. Is this like a drawing program? Although it's saying stuff about creating fractal images. I'm really not sure what we got here. Like, it doesn't... Like, there's no, um name to this or anything. It's, it just says Chaos Help. Like, is this some kind of program called Chaos? Like, it's talking about Mandelbrot sets and Julia sets and Fractal Dragons, like... Huh. Well, let's just try running it. Uh... Oh, interesting. Okay, so the Chaos 80s... I... I get it now. <laughs> 87 because it's talking about the 8087 math coprocessor. Right. So let's go quickly run that one instead. Because that will definitely work better. 
Anyways, Chaos for Windows, version 1.3 by Chuck Lindgren. Lindgren? I'm bad at pronouncing names. <laughs> and apparently the full version is $15. Okay. So, yep, I suspected it would maximize given it's a mandal, given it's, well, rendering mandal broth fractals. Um, interesting. So we have like some controls here that we can move to wherever we want. Um, so it's giving us a lot of interesting stats here. Um, there's a use sound option. I don't know what that'll do. Now it's giving me a crosshair. I'm guessing that this allows me to click drag and zoom. Okay, it does, and the sound's already a little more annoying than I expected. <laughs> but yeah, we're generating a Mandelbrot fractal in Windows 3.1 in DOSBox. <laughs> yeah, this is probably chewing through a lot of CPU power. Well, as much as DOSBox can be tasked to use. <laughs> I do like the color palette it's going for, though, because usually with a Mandelbrot program like this, or anything doing kind of fractal stuff, you would expect it to use like a default palette or something, but no, we got a very well thought out 256 color palette going here. Oh, we can even edit the palette. Well, that's the palette we're going for right now. Um, oh, it does have a standard palette. Which is kind of weird. It doesn't look like it's completely changed it. Huh. Now well, we'll stick with this volcano palette. So, what else can we do here? We got pixel size. So, the highest resolution but slow for the biggest pixels, which means it's probably not going to resolve much further than this, I'm guessing. No, it's still going. Huh. Okay, so we have a parameters button here, so we can set up the specifics of what we're doing here. I notice iterations is set to 256. My guess is that that's so it goes through the entire palette, but 160 is a good safe value if you're not zooming way in. So I'm going to set it to 160. And then let's get rid of that sound because the sound is actually really annoying. Um, there's a couple of methods here. We've got a resolving method, and then... Oh, well, it's not um, redrawing it when I choose those options. Hmm. Okay, well, we can just switch the Julia set here. Um, this doesn't look quite right. Oh, okay. So, because of the differences that I chose for the rendering method... Why is it doing more rendering? I thought it got everything it needed to in this first pass. Yeah, I don't understand why it's doing multiple passes when it already... Um... <laughs> and I can't reset it unless I go to something else first. Yeah, look at that. It's got some weird thing going on. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be a good way to automatically redraw whatever's on screen, which is kind of, um, weird. Okay, that's weird. Why did it go back to the... Yeah, I think part of the problem here is that it seems to have some bugs <laughs> with how it's handling certain things. Yeah, that time it didn't start drawing extra... drawing extra renders of it. Yeah, it's weird. I'm actually going to quit the program for a moment here because I think it, I might have glitched it out by changing the rendering method there. No, it's still broken now. What the heck? Unless this is supposed to be like a default image, because I don't, I didn't see it like resolve the image when it drew, draw, when it, drew, when it rendered this to the screen. <laughs> Not entirely certain what this would be. This looks like, it looks like a Julia set fractal. And it looks like they've set it up in such a way to make it so that it's like spinning into the inside. So if we actually zoom into one of these sections here, oh yeah, this is going to go very slow. Because, <laughs> yeah, fractals do take quite a while to render properly. 
And this is just with 256 iterations. Imagine if we pump that up. So yeah, that's Chaos. It's a fractal generator. It was, this would be a pretty advanced thing for when it came out. The only trouble is, well, there's, there's two troubles. First of all, you're competing with Fractant. Fractant is the de facto fractal rendering program for DOS that even works in Windows and has so many video modes to choose from and so many fractals to choose from. And Fractant is free. Like I don't remember if the DOS version was considered freeware. There might have been some kind of some kind of um, registration or something, but you could still use it for free, and it still had everything in it. So you're competing against that when you're writing fractal software that you intend people to spend money on back then. So as far as this program's concerned, like it works. It's a little buggy. Looks nice. But, yeah, you're competing with Rackdent.